Right, so actually what we're going to do here is something a little bit tricky. Now, um, exam questions several times will ask you uh, about how to work out the components of the force acting along a slope, like parallel to it, or perpendicular to it. Now, I'm going to do this example with cows here. So, um, with my little cow here, if he's just sitting there like that, uh, we know that if he's, the weight force acting downwards is going to be equal to the reaction force acting upwards. Um, but that is the maximum amount of force that it can be. So there, it's the minimum amount. So if you let the cow go, it will just fall to the floor because there's no support force there. So in between, there must be varying amounts, and that's the maximum it can be. Right, so there's the cow, and uh, if we lift it up like this, and we lift it up, and we lift it up, there's a certain point at which it just starts to move. There we go. So that point there is the moment, if we just go back very, very slightly, down very, very slightly, at which the friction just equals um, the component of the weight force acting along the slope. You go higher than that and it moves because the weight force acting along the slope, parallel to the slope, is uh, greater than the frictional force holding it back. So you can find out how much friction is in between the cow and the slope. Right, so what we need to do is we need to make some measurements. Now, conveniently, I've made this one metre, and I've done this several times now, and it, it actually starts to move around about 20 centimetres. Now, we can use that and use some trigonometry and find out the angle of the slope. It isn't actually the angle of the slope we need, we need something else to do with that, and I'll show you on the board in a minute. Right, so first to work out the angle, what we're saying here, that is one metre, and then this here is 20 centimetres, 0.2 metres, and I'm measuring this to about a centimetre precision right now. So the next thing I do is I'll label this H, we've got O over here, and we've got A there. Now, we've got the hypotenuse and the opposite. Sine theta so, equals opposite over hypotenuse which means that sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.2 over 1 equals 11.5369, there we go. So that is the angle, um, this is this angle here. Now the thing is, this is where it gets a few people a little bit confused. Now, I don't really want that angle there because I'm going to draw my cow now and it's best just visualising as a regular object. All you're going to have to do is regular objects. So here then, there's the centre of mass, so that means the weight force downward to the cow must equal the normal reaction force upwards. Right, so I need to find out something to do with the angle of the slope. I want to know what the friction is acting up that way. So I've got the friction acting that way. So here, this will be the maximum. It can never be more than that. So I know if I'm drawing a triangle on here, that must be the hypotenuse. I'm going to label that H because it can't be any more than the hypotenuse, that's the longest one. So that means I've got to draw my right-angled triangle now to coincide with that being the hypotenuse. So that takes a line up from there, and you end up with a right-angled triangle. Now, what we need to do next is kind of clean this up a bit, because it gets a bit messy. So what I've got then there, I've got my hypotenuse there, and I've got my force which is perpendicular to the slope, I've got my friction acting that way. That's the hypotenuse. I actually want this angle here, not that angle there. So, any line that's drawn from there will have exactly the same angle, which means if I draw a line straight from there, I know that that angle there is 11.53. So I just work out this angle here, I just do 90 minus. Answer. So we end up with 90 minus my answer. It actually gives me an angle there, that angle there, of 78.463 will do. I think I really need to go any further than that. Now, we just need the value for the weight. The value of that is we get our cow and we measure its mass. So we have an 80 gram cow. 
Right, so convert that now into a weight force. So that's 80 times 10 to the minus 3 times by 9.81. So the weight force of our cow is 0 0.7. Eight, four, eight. Right, now, we're going to have to use that there, use this angle, and we're going to have to calculate the frictional force here. So, again, oh, let's have a look at this now, what am I looking for? Right, that's H, that's O, and that is A. So I'm going to have to use the adjacent here. Now, I've got the, um, I want to find the adjacent, I've got the hypotenuse, and I've got the angle. So, I'm going to have to use cosine. So, as you can see here, so as you can see here, um, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. You times the hypotenuse by both sides, and you end up with um, cos of the angle times the weight force. Now that gives you the adjacent at 0 0.1569605, but because I was measuring at best on there, at centimetre precision, I'm just going to go for two decimal places. So I'm going to give the component of the weight force that is contributing to friction along the slope is 0 0.16 newtons. Now, if you want to work out it perpendicular, then here, we're going to find out the opposite. So you just have to use sine instead. It's just sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, and rearrange it, and you can find exactly the same thing. So this works for anything, whether it's cows, horses, trees, fish, or even goats.